Greetings and welcome back to the Almost Daily YouTube Integrals Cult Meeting, hosted by yours truly, Kamal. Today, we're going to be discussing the integral from 0 to 1 of root x divided by 1 minus x times the logarithm of x divided by 1 minus x dx. And this is going to be a little different from the normal type of integral videos I do. Because normally, I would just raw dog something and then say, okay, cool, we have a bunch of exotic techniques, maybe using complex analysis, contour integration, or maybe special functions, and then say, we got a really cool result. But sometimes, it's so useful in terms of efficiency to actually just look at the structure of an integral and investigate any kind of symmetries that may, that may or may not exist. So my normal approach would be to just look at the substitution that sc that's screaming at us in the face in the hopes of getting a really awesome looking integral that we can solve in some fancy manner. Like I would normally just let x divided by 1 minus x equal t. Now this would mean that x here equals t times 1 minus x and I'm attempting to solve for x in terms of t now, so I have x equal to t minus tx. So we have x plus tx equal to t, implying that x here equals t divided by 1 plus t. And now we can differentiate to get the differential element. So differentiating gives us dx equal to 1 plus t times the derivative of t is just 1 minus t times the derivative of 1 plus t is again just 1 divided by 1 plus t squared dt terribly sorry about that so we have some cancellation over here meaning that the differential element transforms to dt divided by 1 plus t whole thing squared and what about the what about the limits of integration <laughs> well as x approaches 0 terribly sorry about that we have t also approaching 0 and as x approaches one from the left, we have t approaching positive infinity. Okay, cool. So we've transformed the integral into a new one from zero to infinity. Of what exactly? We have root of whatever we substituted, so that's going to be root t times the logarithm of t divided by one plus t whole thing squared dt. And we might even want to get rid of this root t term because, well, why not? So we're going to let root t equal u, which implies that dt by 2 times root t equals du, which means, again, terribly sorry about that, dt equals 2 root t du, but we know that root t is just our u variable, so we have 2u du, and this further implies that the target integral, the limits are, of course, unaltered by our transformation, is the integral from 0 to infinity of root t becoming u, then we have log u squared. The differential element is now 2u du. We're dividing the whole thing by 1 plus u squared squared. Okay, cool. And of course, log u squared is 2 times log u. So we have 4 times the integral from 0 to infinity of u squared log u divided by 1 plus u squared squared du. And we could even expand the integrand a bit. We have u squared here. So we have four times the integral from zero to infinity of u squared plus one minus one. So it's the mathematician's favorite trick of adding a zero, the other favorite trick being multiplying by one. And then, and then we have log u divided by one plus u squared squared du. Now expanding the multiplication gives us four times the integral from zero to infinity u squared plus one log u, but we have u squared plus 1 squared in the denominator, meaning that we have some nice cancellation, leading to log u divided by 1 plus u squared du minus the integral from 0 to infinity of u squared log u. Oh, terribly sorry about that. That's just log u and a factor 4 outside. Terribly sorry about that. Divided by 1 plus u squared squared du. Now this is right up our aisle. We can show that this integral converges to 0 using the transformation u to 1 by u, and we can evaluate the second integral using contour integration, or a series expansion even. So there are fancy techniques we can actually adopt to solve this integral, but sometimes 
it's really nice to look at the symmetry or possible symmetries existing in an integral. What do I mean by that? Well, let me just copy this down here. So notice that we have x, 1 minus x, those kind of terms, and we're integrating from 0 to 1. So if there's a possible symmetry, it would mean a much more time-efficient solution development, although the solution development using contra-integration is going to be a lot cooler, obviously, and that's something that I thoroughly enjoy. But just for the sake of novelty, let's try investigating a more efficient route. So we have 0 and 1 being the limits. We have x and 1 minus x terms. So why not investigate the symmetry in going from x to 1 minus x, meaning that dx goes to negative x. So i is now the integral from 1 to 0 of root x here would turn into, well, x. And we have... Oh, x here would turn into 1 minus x, and 1 minus x would turn into x, of course. And we have the logarithm of 1 minus x divided by x, negative sign dx. And, of course, we get rid of the negative sign by switching up the limits of integration. Okay, cool. It looks quite similar to the structure over here. And we can make it look even more similar by exploiting log properties. We know that log 1 minus t equals negative log t, so we're going to make use of that and write this as negative integral 0 to 1 root 1 minus x divided by x times the logarithm of x divided by 1 minus x dx. So with these two structures for the same integral, we can add them up, meaning that we have 2 times i equal to the integral from 0 to 1. This log term can be factored out and we're left with x divided by 1 minus x minus root 1 minus x divided by x dx. And this is something that we can simplify quite easily. We have integral 0 to 1, log x divided by 1 minus x times what exactly do we have? Well, root x times root x is just x, and we have a negative sign with 1 minus x over there. Then we got 1 minus x times x all in the square root. So let me just write this out. Terribly sorry about that. And there is no cancellation happening, unfortunately. However, we do have a nice integral. It is the integral from 0 to 1 of log x divided by 1 minus x times, what do we have? We got 2x divided by root x minus x squared. Oh, there's a negative 1 term up there as well. And this is pretty cool because all we need now is some integration by parts and we're home free. So it's a pretty efficient solution development relative to other more exotic techniques. And it's basically a W for all those motherfuckers in the comment section being like, no, we don't need complex analysis. We just need real methods to solve it. Well, one, yes, you're right in this case anyway. Two, contour integration is a lot more fun. So fuck it. Three, all for the lols. No disrespect to anyone, regardless of your aversion or your liking, I guess, for more exotic versus more efficient solutions. We're pretty much here for the fun of it, just for the fun of solving hard calculus problems. So anyway, we have 2i equal to this structure, and now for some integration by parts, we'll rewrite the integral as that from 0 to 1 of log x divided by 1 minus x d, let me see, we need 2 times root x minus x squared, and a negative sign for it all to make sense. Okay, cool. So on integration by parts, we have negative 2 root x minus x squared times log x minus x divided by 1 minus x, that is, with the limits being 0 and 1. And then we have another negative sign, but that cancels out, giving us a positive sign twice the integral from 0 to 1 of root x minus x squared and differentiating log x divided by 1 minus x is pretty easy. This thing is of course log x minus log 1 minus x. So differentiating it gives us 1 by x and the negatives cancelling out. So we have 1 by 1 minus x dx and again some simplification is in order we have 1 minus x plus x divided by x times 1 minus x. 
meaning that we have 1 by x divided, uh, x minus x squared, which is pretty cool because we have exactly the same thing in a square root. And this thing you can prove quite trivially, it equals, it evaluates to zero in both limits as x, approach, as x approaches zero and as x approaches one. So this implies that i is now twice the integral from zero to one of root x minus x squared divided by x minus x squared dx. And wait, this is two times i, remember? Yeah, that's about it. The twos cancel out quite nicely, implying that i is just the integral from zero to one of dx divided by root x minus x squared. And now it's time to complete the square. So we have x minus, terribly sorry about that, x minus x squared equal to negative x squared minus two x times one half. So we need a plus one quarter minus one quarter thing going here. So we have negative x minus one half squared, the negatives canceling out for the one quarter. Okay, cool. And this thing is of course, is of course one half squared. So we're gonna let x here, rather we're gonna let x minus one half equal to one half times the sine of theta which implies that dx equals one half of cosine theta. Now what about the limits? As x approaches zero, we have sine theta approaching negative one, which means that theta approaches negative pi by two. And for x approaching one, we have theta approaching pi by two. Okay, cool. So now, we have i being the integral from negative to positive pi by two. Someone in the comments once wrote something really interesting. It was, it was along the lines of therapist, cursive pi by two does not exist. It cannot hurt you. Cursive pi by two. Yeah, that's how I write it. It's a, it's a cursive version of pi by two, just out of habit. I mean, I can write it in this form, but just out of habit, it, it ends up like that. So the differential element was in fact, sorry about that. I mean, terribly sorry about that. I almost, I'm terribly sorry for missing the terribly in my terribly sorry. I almost messed up big time over there. I mean, that was, that was Maths 505 heritage. And that was a horrible attempt at it, trying to imitate uh, Jose Mourinho's accent, which is also part of Maths 505 heritage. So we have one half cosine theta d theta divided by, in the square root, we have one half squared minus one half times sine theta squared, which means we have, well, factor out the one half and you have one minus cosine squared, uh, one minus sine squared, which is of course cosine squared. So we have integral negative to positive pi by two, one half cosine theta d theta divided by one half cosine theta, some lovely cancellation, implying that the target integral is in fact pi, which is quite a satisfying result. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. More importantly, I hope you learned something from the video drop me a follow on instagram and in case you like the effort i'm putting out consider supporting my content on patreon all patrons get early access to all my videos via write-ups for example this integral was already posted i think two or three days ago thank you see you next time